Welcome back. This week we're going to continue with our Power of Forgiveness series and this week it brings celebration. Our theme verse is found in Ephesians 4.32. It says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you.
last week we talked a little bit about the celebration that the lost sheep had when the shepherd found him. Well, this week we're going to go a little farther. But we need a little bit of information about it. So this week through the next five weeks, we're going to be talking about a journey. And the journey is for one reason and one reason only. It's the cost that Jesus paid to allow us to be forgiven. Now that sounds like a mouthful or a lot to take in, but it's true. It took a lot that Jesus had to do between now and him dying on the cross and then him raising from the dead to be able to pay for our forgiveness. And we're gonna learn about this in this journey. So first of all, you're gonna need some background. The background starts with Moses. Moses had a job that was given to him by God and he said, I want you to get the Israelites out of slavery and take them to the promised land. So that was his job. Pharaoh was the ruler at that time. And he, Moses had to go and talk to Pharaoh and say, let his people go. Pharaoh didn't want to. His job was to deny everybody. So Moses kept on going back and saying, you need to release the people. Pharaoh kept on saying, no, no, you're not going to do that. So he kept them as slaves. God didn't want that. God's people kept on crying out to him, please save us, please save us. Moses kept on going back because that was his job. So God ends up sending 10 plagues in the story of Moses. And the last one is the one we're going to kind of give us the best background of our story today. So the 10th plague was for the angel of death to come over and kill all the firstborn. Man, that sounds horrible, doesn't it? All the firstborn in every household had to be wiped out because Pharaoh kept on denying what God wanted him to do. So in order for this not to happen, there was a protection plan. God said that you needed to have a sacrificial lamb that needed to be used as a sacrifice and you were to take his blood and wipe it over the door frame of your house. This would allow the angel of death to see that marking of protection and pass over your house, allowing everybody in that household to live. So God allowed there to be a protection. Pharaoh still denied it. It happened. But God's people that had that marking on it were protected. Pharaoh finally allowed the people to leave and not be slaves anymore. And Moses took all of them and took them over to the promised land on a journey. But in order for them to remember that saving grace that God gave them, they celebrate every year from that time called the Passover. And it was a festival and a festivity that they had to remember how much God loved them during that time. So that's going to be the background that we need for our story and our journey for the next few weeks that we're going to be learning for learning about. So let's watch this video on how they actually celebrated by watching a story called The Triumphal Entry. Stories of the Bible, The Triumphal Entry. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses, when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. Jesus and his disciples stopped in the town. You coming? And Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead of them. Eh, okay. He told them to go into a village and that they would see a young donkey that no one had ever ridden. Rock! He told them to untie it and bring it to him. If anyone asks, what are you doing? He told them to just say, the Lord needs it and will return it soon. Okay, go ahead. 
So the disciples did what Jesus said and brought him the donkey. A long time ago, before Jesus was even born, God had said that the Savior, the King of Israel, would come to Israel in this way. And now Jesus was doing just as God had said. The news that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem swept through the city. Many heard about all the amazing things he had done, so they cut palm branches and ran to see him. Huh? The Pharisees and religious rulers realized that there was nothing they could do, for everyone was going to see Jesus. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem and the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. His followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. The Pharisees were upset and they told Jesus to stop the people from saying things like that. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. So the people kept on singing, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered, asking, who is this? And the crowds replied, it's Jesus. And Jesus rode the donkey through the street of Jerusalem to the temple in a triumphal entry just as God said he would many years before. So last week, we talked about how important we were to God that he sent Jesus as the good shepherd to save us or to rescue us from the sin that we were in, right? And how he forgave us and allowed us to be part of his flock again. Well, this week, um, we're talking a little bit about the celebration from last week, which was one sinner comes to know Jesus and they celebrate in heaven. Well, this is a little bit different of a celebration. This is a celebration that uh, the people were doing at this time. So have you guys ever been to a festival or maybe a parade? There's a lot of different things that go on at these times. There's uh, lots of colorful things. There's lots of noise. It's usually loud. There's music, there's singing, there's marching, there's shouting, even par and even floats that are in these parades. Well, this is kind of where we find ourselves in this video, right? Jesus was in the triumphal entry. The people were throwing down their colorful coats in front of him. They were waving palm branches and shouting Hosanna and all these loud things that a festival or a parade would happen. But there was no float. Jesus came humbly on a donkey. People wanted to see this King of Kings and Lord of Lords, which Jesus really was. But this was in a different way than they expected. He wasn't riding on a white horse. He was just on a donkey. And there was colorful things all laying in front of him like a normal parade or festival would be. But even though there were people shouting and praising for him, there were still others that were going on the side saying, Tell them to be quiet. Stop their shouting. Stop their praising. And this made Jesus sad. In the video, it showed him with a tear. And he even was crying. He even says that he wept. Now, was he crying because they hurt his feelings? I don't think so. I think he was crying because he knew that his journey that he was on that started with this triumphal entry would lead up to the heavy cost that he would have to pay on the cross and all those sins that he would be taken away from us by dying on the cross for us. He wept because he came to save everybody, you and me, and those people that were even mocking him or telling them to be quiet, he, died, he was here for them too. But even though he was there, they would still turn their backs on him. I think that's why he was sad, was because he knew he loved them so much, but they were still turning him away, saying, no, you're not the King of Kings. No, you're not the Lord of Lords. So with this journey, Jesus knew that there was a plan 
that God had set into motion. God's amazing, amazing love for us was that he would bring his son, Jesus, to the earth to die on the cross for all of our sins. And that sin is the thing that separates us from God. So Jesus is allowing us to be forgiven if we just call out to him like the sheep or yell and say, I need your help, please forgive me. Those are the things that Jesus came for us. So we won't be separated from God. So we can have that relationship with God right there because we don't have that sin in our life because God's forgiven us. Now, Jesus could have not forgiven those guys that were saying, ah, be quiet. But he chose to forgive. He chose to forgive everybody because he came not just for one person, not just for me. He came for all of us. Now, we can use Jesus as an example. And in, when we need to forgive others, we can use him as the example because this Jesus came to forgive everybody, right? He was hurt. We get hurt when people hurt us. We cry even sometimes. And there's times that we don't want to, but we have that choice. We have that choice to forgive others. And we also have his help. He's there to help us when it hurts too much or when we're really, really sad because somebody's hurt us so much. All we have to do is say, help me, Jesus, and he'll be there for us. Now, we have a new video that's called Kids Talk, and it's going to talk about I can forgive. So let's watch this video on forgiveness. Yesterday, my best friend and I got into That video was awesome. It was talking about how we can forgive others when bad things happen and things that we don't want to happen or the things that we didn't expect to happen, but we can forgive. And just to go over this week's lesson, remember the power of forgiveness brings us celebration. Not only the celebration that we are going to go to heaven, but also the triumphal entry and how it was a celebration to those around it because they had the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords there with them. We also want to remember that it was God's amazing love and his plan that brought Jesus here to do what he needed to on his journey to find out for us how much forgiveness cost him. So let's go ahead and pray and thank him. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your amazing plan and how much it cost Jesus. We thank you so much for allowing that to happen. We thank you for allowing Jesus to come to the world to be able to do the things that you guys had planned for us to be forgiven. We thank you so much for your love, your grace, and ask you this week to help us be able to forgive others when they hurt us. In your name we pray. Amen. Don't forget to come back next week and continue on our journey of the power of forgiveness. Bye. This week we're going to be talking about how much it brings celebration. Celebration celebrates the celebrate um, that was celebration that for the celebration over our story on a quick glimpse glimpse. <laughs> We're over. Stay, stay, stay. I'll get it. It's a celebration. The celebration. Celebration. This is a celebration. The celebration. Oh. <laughs> Dear Lord. I can forgive.